So dismissing the role of karma in knowledge, he gives two other reasons why this is not tenable to even sport the idea, even just play with the idea that karma has a role. And the two reasons he gives here, he says, Kala Vishesha Abhavat. Kala Vishesha. Vishesha means a specific Kala time. So, with regard to karma, karma always goes, runs in tandem with time. There is a time for every action, correct? In the West we don't think so. Because one is accustomed to waking up as when, when one wants, sleeping when one wants, eating whenever one wants. <laughs> Right? So this kind of a, we don't have, we, in fact, that is how life is kind of led in the West. But not so according to the Vaidika Dharma. Because Karma means there is a certain action. Even in the West, you know, you, I mean, unless one is working the graveyard shift, you don't get up at 2 a.m. and go to office. Nobody does that. <laughs> Maybe you are working the night shift, it's different. There is a time for that. There is a time to cook, there is a time to eat, there is a method in a certain way. And, and uh, if you talk also in terms of the Vaidika life, lifestyle, so therefore the karmas are divided into Nitya Karma. What is Nitya Karma? Hmm? What, what it that has to be done every day. Always done karma. That has to be done every day. Such as brushing the teeth. You know, an act of social service. I've told you this. <laughs> A civic act. <laughs> so, so this is Nitya Karma. If you talk it from the Laukika, talking from the Laukika perspective, Vaidika per perspective, Puja is Nitya Karma. And the funny thing about Nitya Karma, is if you do, you don't get a prize. You don't get any, you know, phala. Oh, I'm not getting punya by doing nitya karma? No. Why should I do it then? <laughs> you should do it because if you don't do it, you will incur a papa called pratyavaya dosha. Yes, akarane pratyavaya. So in not doing it, you incur a papa. That's why you do it. You do it to ward off the papa. This is just a way to make sure people brush their teeth. Okay? Yeah. It's a Vedic way of uh, making sure that things needing to be done are done. You scare the person, you are going to incur a papa, everybody will run and do it. That's all. So this is just a model. So Nitya Karma. And then certain Karma are done occasionally. Shraddhadi. And what is that like? You know, Pitra Paksha comes once a year. Mahashivaratri comes once a year. This is all what called Naimittika Karma, occasional Karma. Then we have Kamya Karma, desire based Karma. Then we have certain things not never to be done. At no time should they be indulged in, called Pratishiddha karma or Nishiddha karma, if you want to keep the knee, uh, thing going. Nitya, <laughs> Naimitika, Nishiddha. And then what? If you do Nishiddha karma, then what do you do? Prayashtita, <laughs> fifth form of karma. <laughs> Because if you do something that you are not supposed to do, then there is atonement karma for that, a repentance karma, called prayaschitta karma. These are the five kinds of karma and there are certain rules that rule each and every action. 
kind of action. Nitya karma cannot be done once in a while. Obviously, that's why it's called Nitya karma. Nai Nitya karma should not be done every day. Because every day if we are doing Mahashivaratri, finished, you know. And then Kamya karma, forget. Because that is not really enjoined by the Vedas. That is coming from you. But then uh, the, the, the Nishiddha karma also is done only. You know, when the, the, the desires are overridden, Nishiddha karma, which should never be done, is done in a moment of helplessness when the desire overrides dharma. That's when Nishiddha karma takes place. There is also a particular circumstance for that. And prayas chitta also, nobody does prayas chitta if they have not done anything wrong. That's not needed. So this is what is called kala sankocha. Kala sankocha means karma is within the rubric of time. Karma and time are married to one another. Sankocha means a, a restriction, a limiting factor. So Kala Sankocha is there for karma and Kala Vishesha is also there for karma. Kala Vishesha means a specific enjoined time for the action, for it to be fruitful. Like you have to, like even if you talk of something not Vedic, Laukika you talk, like sowing seeds. Where will you sow the seeds? When will you sow the seeds? You cannot sow the seeds in the season of drought or when the rainy season has gone. If you sow the seeds, what will you reap? Nothing. So therefore, this Kala becomes a very important factor in the produ pr production of karma. But in the gain of this knowledge, where is the Kala? Does Kala, is time a factor in gaining the knowledge? Yes. Why? Because the gain of knowledge takes a long time. <laughs> you may argue like that, but no. You know, how long does it take for you to know this is flower? Flower is, flower is seen, flower is known. Eyes are open, flower is seen, flower is known or otherwise sensed through various other Jnana Indriyas. How long does it take? No time at all for the flower to be known as flower. And how long does it want to talk of the eye that is already self-existent? Even less time, even if there is any time involved, there is no time involved. In the despiriting of Ajnanam, there is no time involved. Then why does everyone feel like it takes a long time to gain Jnanam? Gaining Jnanam doesn't take long time. Abiding in and assimilating this knowledge perhaps takes time if there are other inhibiting factors such as non-preparation, insufficient preparation. You know, something other than preparation, parading as preparation. And or habitual patterns that come in the way of seeing, you know, come in the way of living this knowledge. For which Nididhyasana, Manana and all is done after Shravana. So those are the inhibiting factors. The knowledge you cannot say, after all these years of studying, you cannot say, I don't know. You know. But the knowledge appears to vanish as soon as one leaves the classroom. That is, that is the nature of the you know, that's not the nature of the knowledge, that's the nature of something there, an inhibiting factor. That is the nature of the inhibition there, which we are looking at. We are not looking at knowledge. The enjoyment of this uncovering is inhibited because that uncovering is not completely done or habitual patterns are co coming and as though covering up that which has been uncovered. Like the clouds are gathering after the darshan of the sun. That's how it is. And so the momentarily sun comes out and then the clouds regather as it were. So to here, but there is no time in the involved in the gain of that which is timeless. There is no time involved. How long do you want to be Brahman? Huh? Forever. When did you first want to be Brahman? <laughs> there is no such thing. Life after life after life, before, 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 as long as, you know, the, the when was the first jiva? That's why that question is never answered in the Shastra. Anadi. 
So Anadi Kalena, for from the longest time, from timeless time, this, this timelessness has been yearned for by every jiva, whether they know it or not. And so there is no question of time. And how long you want to have moksha? Nobody says half an hour I want moksha, please. Desperate. One day, if you give me moksha pass, you know, you have like a day pass on a bus. Nobody says it's enough. I want it forever. So here, on the one hand, when we discuss karma, we have the constraint of time. It is within the rubric of the time-space matrix that karma is able to produce anything at all, that whatever it produces. But here when we talk of jnanam, the question of time does not arise in the understanding of oneself as timeless. Time doesn't arise at all. Because it's all about now. Now are you here? Yes. Now are you sad? Say no quickly. No. 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 <laughs> what about now? 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 Even if you say yes, I have an answer. Because I will say that was then. This is now. That moment when you said yes is gone. Correct? So this now, 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 in the now, there is the, the, the seeds of timelessness are in the now. The now itself happens to be free of time. And the knowledge of the I as the now is, has no truck with time. No truck with karma, no truck with time. But poor karma is always tied to time. <laughs> yeah, it has to take the permission of time. Like you have to take the permission of the significant other. You know, should we do this? Should I do that? Can I do that? Small, small things you have to start taking permission. In order to be in a relationship, it's all about the dance of negotiation and taking permission and making sure the other person is okay. So poor karma is under the diktat of time. Whereas glorious knowledge is, is about, uh, which is all about timelessness, is not at all about time. Nothing to do with time. And then even if you look at it from the level of the ashramas, the various stages in life, when is it a good time to gain the knowledge? They say, oh, first you are brahmachari, student. Then after that, what? Samsari, no. Grihastha. <laughs> Grihastha. <laughs> and then, actually, you know, in some languages, samsaram means wife. Yeah. <laughs> samsaram, in, in Tamil language, I have come along with samsaram means along with my wife I have come. Yeah. They say they they, they mean what they say, really. They say it as the as it is. Yeah. Spouse means samsaram. Yeah. Samsaram means yeah. And hamara uh, main to sansari hu, hamara sansar hai. They say you know, all this even in Hindi. Yeah. So this is what it is. So this this you, you come along with samsara. So basically. <laughs> that is how it is. And now coming to this knowledge, what is there? There is, you know, you can you, you can you cannot say that there are it is subject to certain stages and then after uh, you know Grihastha what comes? Forest dweller. Forest dweller in this age and day of deforestation. Where will the forest dweller go? Really? Forest dweller, Vana Prasthi. And then finally, Ha, Sanyasa. So the understanding is that this is the road, and so the gain of knowledge has to come at the very end of one's life, which is why everybody in India waits to retire to gain this knowledge. They say after retirement. Don't let's forget the vyutpatti of the word retire. Vyutpatti means the, the when you break apart the word, when you take it apart. Means you are already retired. Already you are tired. <laughs> what knowledge is going to go into the head? And in fact, no time, you know, Adi Shankara, in a verse attributed to Adi Shankara, a verse talks about how 
no time is the correct time for the pursuit of Brahman, of the knowledge of Brahman. Because sometimes people lament, oh, I wish I had encountered this knowledge when I was five. Balastavat krida sakta hai. It is a child, bala hai. Tavat at that time. Krida, krida ya asakta hai. Completely involved in play. So you try to teach a four year old, a five year old, you are Brahman. What will it say? You know, whatever. It's not interesting. Because there is another pursuit that is taking up the time. Oh, maybe when you are youthful and when all the, the brain cells are at their prime functioning, they are not dying off before you can count them. <laughs> maybe that's the time to pursue this. The mind is sharp, clear, you can memorize everything at your fingertip. You have to be a taruna, means a young person, youth. Tarunastavad taruni raktaha. Youth is interested only in another youth, <laughs> says Bhaja Govinda. Yeah. Okay, okay, we have to follow the, the treaded path, not the dreaded path, <laughs> the treaded path, which is that you wait till you retire. You wait till you are a vriddha. Vriddha means elderly. Vriddhastavad chinta magnaha. Vidha is completely embroiled in chinta. What is chinta? Worries and anxieties. What will happen? What will happen to my property? Are if you are not there, what will let anything happen? No, no, no. I want to control from the other side. <laughs> who cries? Who, who gets this? Who this thing? Will my children get along after me? Even in, uh, before, even when you are there, they don't get along. They just come home for the holidays and pretend. Please understand, they're not getting along, even now. <laughs> they just put a show for you, that's all. <laughs> Out of respect for you, they are putting on a show. They don't get along. No, but will they be nice to each other? You don't have any control. Oh, how will I die? That also you don't know. Will I just malinger away? And then we, uh, I don't want to be a burden to anybody. That also is not in your hands. Or will it be sudden and quick and uh, that is also a problem because I won't have time to say goodbye. <laughs> See, this is, these are the worries. And how much money should I need to, you know, to, to in the event of a pro protracted, prolonged vegetative state leading to death. How much money should I need? Big worry. What will happen? How will it, you know, how will the expenses be borne? So this is the mind of the elderly person. Now the Shankara in Bhajagovindam laments, Pare Brahmani Kopina Lagnaha. Nobody is interested in poor Parabrahman. Nobody is interested. So in other words, if you look at it really from the Laukika viewpoint, standpoint, no time is good for the pursuit of Brahman because there will always be other competing pursuits if this pursuit is not understood. But then by the same token, no time is wrong for the pursuit of Brahman either. To quote the Aitareya Upanishad Bhashya by Adi Shankara, in Aitareya Upanishad gives a piece of advice. Yat aharam vrajet, tad aharam eva pravrajet. He says that the moment Vairagya takes a hold of you, finally Vairagya, the son of Vairagya dawns. Where? In the darkness of the mind. In the darkness of the mind cluttered by various pursuits, the son of Viveka Vairagya, the twin sons dawn. You know, some planets have two sons. So here we can look at that kind of a star wars universe. Twin sons dawn of Vivek and uh, Vairagya and Viveka. And that day everything is crystal clear. It's so clear that this is the path to follow, that everything should be dropped. Once in a while you must have felt it. Don't be afraid to say yes, you know. <laughs> Once in a while, one sudden day, it is so clear that, you know, this, this knowledge is the only thing to pursue. 
This nothing else matters. What am I doing? And Adi Shankara says, that is the day you drop everything. Don't wait for some other day. And so therefore, we have the possibility of going to, to sannyasa from brahmacharya itself directly after skipping the, the other stage, the householder stage, household stage. And skipping the from householder stage like Mandana Mishra did. Because Mandana Mishra, when he lost the debate, what did he do? He didn't say, oh, I'll just go back and do another yajna. No. <laughs> you know, in those days, the giving of sannyasa was very easy. There, there was nothing. There was no rules, nothing. They just threw an orange cloth on you, finished. That's all it was. And then he had to dress up in orange and go behind the guru. That's what it is. He just followed the guru, left everything. So, this is what it is. Yad ahara. The, which that day, when which the when the Viveka and Vairagya dawn and the clarity comes that this is the only pursuit to follow, that is the day you drop everything. Meaning that this knowledge can be pursued at any stage, at any age, at any time. So time is not a factor in the gaining of this knowledge. So you see time is not a factor in three ways. Time is not a factor in the sense that it takes time to gain the knowledge, one. Time is not a factor in the sense that the knowledge has to be gained at a particular muhurta, Brahma Vela. You know, at four o'clock in the morning I have to study, then only I'll gain this knowledge. No, even at the empirical level, time is not a factor. Finally, time is not a factor in terms of the age and stage, when and how one decides to pursue this knowledge. So from Brahmacharya you can go to Sanyasa, from Grihastha Ashrama you can go to Sanyasa, from Vanaprastha you can go to Sanyasa. Sanyasa means pursuit of this knowledge. You can do that at any time. There is no time. And also time is not a factor because how long does it take? Achirena adhigachati. Bhagavan Krishna says. No time at all. Not long hence. So the time is a factor only in terms of gaining the preparedness, not really the knowledge. Because the knowledge is a gained gain, which is timeless, so there is no time uh, involved. So that is what he is trying to say in this sentence, that vidya yaha, for this knowledge, specific time, kala vishesha bhavat, specific time not being there for this knowledge, and then what? Nitya. Uh, niyata niya, uh, animitatvat uh, niyata niyata uh, nimitatvat kala sankoja anupattihi anupapattihi and you know niyata nimitatvam vidyayaha na asti niyata nimitatvam means a particular kind of a coexistence with something else time related coexistence of something other than the knowledge needing something other than itself to ride on which is connected to something occasional because when he uses niyata here he, he is talking about naimittika karma here yeah, when he uses the word nimittatvat it's a nod to naimittika karma so there is nothing even you know, occasionally there is no temporal limit, limitation and it is not, nimitta means it is not uh, dependent on specific nimittas, causes. And why is it not dependent on specific causes? Because that which is the cause of the universe, what will, what will, it, it itself it is uncaused. So how will it be dependent on a cause when it is not caused? That is what I am trying to discover. That is what I am trying to understand as the truth of myself. And the nimitta here, when we talk of cause, causality and time are correlated again. So there is neither time nor cause which are factors. So there is kala sankocha anubhapattihi vidyayaha. So for this knowledge, there is no tenability of any kind of strictures or constrictions with regard to time. So therefore, there is no karma, the, the, the whiff of karma also does not come into the picture. So saying, he concludes this very powerful argument 
about why karma and jnanam do not mix and cannot be seen as as coexisting even in the dream in the pursuit of this knowledge because the that which is pursued with the help of action is everything other than the knowledge anatma pursues with the help of karma atma pursues with the help of knowledge alone because that we, atma cannot be pursued by karma why because karma can only have four kinds of things <coughs> manifestation karma can only produce four kinds of effects what are they utpadyam that which is generated did we discuss this already that's from uh, yeah. last time yeah remember no. sometime <laughs> utpadyam that which is generated karma can produce that which was not there but which is you know given birth to that which previously was not there in a particular form but it a, a new form was given utpadyam like a baby is born before was not there in that form baby is born and then what hmm samskaryam the cleaning action what is the classic example copper pot copper pot which does not which looks very black doesn't look like copper at all when there is a small hint in one place somehow which was shielded from the sun and the elements there is a little coppery glow and based on that you infer that the whole thing must be copper and you start rubbing it with tamarind and then before soon before long what happens the whole thing shines the problem with this is after a few weeks what happens it starnished again <laughs> correct yeah. some skaryam the action of cleaning so action produces this is one manifestation of action and then vikaryam so two different things are joined or modified to become one and the classic example of that is milk and yogurt yeah, yeah. milk and yogurt culture are combined to make yogurt and then don't say i want some milk for my coffee it cannot be reversed <coughs> <coughs> then finally what gamyam that which has to be reached like even this cup of water which is away from me i have to reach i have to go and get it and bring it back so utpadyam or apyam both are used samskaryam vikaryam and gamya that which is to be gained or which is away from me and even from this stand point if of the manifestations of karma you cannot really you know gain brahman is brahman utpadyam atma has to be produced like a baby right now is the gestation period after nine upanishads the 10th upanishad nine months you know yeah so the 10th upanishad is going to give birth to the atma baby no atma always is so utpadyam cross and then samskaryam atma has to be cleaned some people say that that which cannot be cleaned is atma atma cannot be cleaned And if you keep trying, you'll just go to the cleaners. That's all. You know, it is. It's going to clean you out of all enthusiasm. If you keep trying to clean the atma, because it is nitya shuddha. Shuddha means always pure, always clean. It doesn't need to be clean. Then two things we have to bring together: atma and anatma. We mix and make a cocktail. Correct? Anatma is also atma. Resolves into atma. there is no such thing as an atma it's all atma anyway at the absolute level then what i have to reach out and touch the atma <laughs> you know with a finger like et you know <laughs> with a red glowing tipped finger i touch the atma you know why because that which cannot be touched is the atma this very upanishad very soon is going to say यद्रेक्षमग्राह्यमोत्रपाणिपाद 
Elsewhere, Shlotrasya Shlotram, the ear of the ear, the eye of the eye, that which enables you to hear, and is manifest both as the hearer and the heard, which is without being either the hearer or the heard, that sentient consciousness is Atma, which is not an object, which is the subject. And so the subject is not subject to objectification. And if the subject is not subject to objectification, all these, you know, things are not going to work at all. And so therefore what? So the karma and action, you know, the, the karma of uh, bringing two things together does not work. And then, uh, or cleaning does not work. Because other than Atma, what are you going to bring to mix with Atma does not work. Then finally, reaching out to touch this Atma does not work. None of these things work. So karma is best tied up in a bundle and kept aside, <laughs> only to be deployed to get some preparation to receive this knowledge gracefully and own it up. That is what he says and concludes this. And then he brings in a Purva Paksha, without calling it a Purva Paksha, but it has to be considered a Purva Paksha because of how it's, you know, because he brings in an important point. Let us read that. Yattu, Yattu, Grihastheshu, Grihastheshu, Brahma Vidya, Brahma Vidya, Sampradaya, Sampradaya, Kartritva Dilingam, Kartritva Dilingam, Na, Na, Tatsthita, Tatsthita, Nayam, Nayam, Baditum, Baditum, Utsahate, Utsahate, Nahi, Nahi, Vidhishate, Napi, Vidhishate, Napi, Tamaf Prakashayo, Tamaf Prakashayo, E Katra, E Katra, Sadhavaha, Sadhavaha, Shakyate Kartum, Shakyate Kartum, Kimuta, Kimuta, Lingaihi, Lingaihi, Evalaihi, Evalaihi, Iti, Iti. Yeah. Yet, so, it's a kind of a hidden Purva Paksha. Because there is also, along with the pervasive abidance of the feeling that karma will take me to moksha is also another feeling or another thinking is why do I have to give up things? So there is a vairagya allergy naturally because the person who is approaching the knowledge is still insecure, is subject to the insecurity centered on the self. And not knowing that the insecurity is centered on the I, one tries to quote unquote become insecure secure by gaining, by embellishing this I with all kinds of nonsensical qualifications and holding all kinds of things. I plus money, I plus time, I plus qualifications, I plus house, I plus family, I plus so many other things, all these statuses. So the insecure person doesn't know this and not knowing this is a problem because it leads one to the wrong pursuits. And so therefore, the feeling is that this whole drastic thing that was said earlier, last month we discussed this, that yadyapi, this is actually connected with uh, the previous verse, go back a whole paragraph, yadyapi jnane, Sarvashraminam adhikaraha asti. Did you find that? Yadyapi jnane sarvashraminam Yadyapi jnane sarvashraminam adhikaraha asti. Tathapi, what does he say? Sanyasa nishtha eva brahma vidya moksha sadhanam na karma sahita iti. You have to go back to that because this is a tangent coming from that. And what does he, did he say earlier? He said, even though all people have the adhikara, all people are qualified to, for this knowledge. You cannot distinguish man, woman, child, young, old, you know, this particular community, that particular, no distinctions. Everybody is entitled to this knowledge. No matter what stage of life they are in, they are entitled to this knowledge. 
even though it is said that still tathapi even though although everyone is entitled to the knowledge nevertheless brahma vidya moksha sadhanam brahma vidya this knowledge is the moksha sadhanam is the is the is the way to feel or to become unbound from samsara for who for those who are able to pursue this almost exclusively yeah the exclusiveness of the pursuit and the need for this exclusiveness is given here by the word by the quotes that he gives vaiksha charyan charantah paramrataha parimuchyanti sarve he talks about all that he talks about that the the importance of the lifestyle of vairagya to pursue this knowledge even though anybody can pursue this knowledge it's most effective when it is accompanied by vairagya that's what he said earlier so then he brings this up yet again in a different form and i'll tell you shortly why and he says yattu grihastashramina no grihastashrama what is what does he say grihasteshu yeah brahma vidya sampradaya kartrutvadi lingam so you can now, now the very million dollar question comes can i be a grihastha and pursue this knowledge by all means who says no of course you can pursue in fact lord brahma is a maha grihastha because he gave birth to the entire world <laughs> bhuvanasya karta bhuvanasya gopta api cha you know chaturdash bhuvana bhuvanali not just one bhuvanam but 14 bhuvanas 14 lokas he created one loka maintaining is so hard so he is maha grihastha correct one child to bring up is so hard imagine 14 lokas populated with yakshas gandharvas kinnaras you know all these karma devas everything deva devas pitra pitras and then what other are there what other kinds are there then all these indra yeah karma deva ajana jana devas all these they have they various kinds of devatas and then even asuras there are very gradations little bit asura mostly bad slightly good all bad no good up to no good yeah little bit of punya accidentally uh, uh, accrued mostly papa all these things are there so imagine maintaining this so he is a mahagrahastha correct and then he is by here he is alluding to the beginning verses of this upanishad om brahma devanam prathama sambhuv etc etc and then sab brahma vidya sarva vidya pratishtha adharvaya prah he gave this knowledge to adharva who was the adharva swaputra his own son he gave his own son this knowledge son means grihastha correct he taught his son just like uddalaka taught shvetaketu who was his son varuna taught bhrigu who was also his son correct and then what did that son do he did many things but of import here for us is that he also taught to his son <laughs> and then who also taught to someone else like this so there is this what is that grihastha parampara yes and then this is a long standing debate in the ancient dharma because they all, always bring uh, these two people they bring adi shankara who was a sanyasi सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमास्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ई सल्यूट दि एंटायर गुरु लिनीज स्टार्टेड विथ दक्षिणामूर्ति इन द फॉर्म ऑफ शिव आदिगुर हूज मिडल लिंक इज आदिशंक एंड अप टू मै ओन गुरु ई सल्यूट दि एंटायर लिनीज दैट इज वन यु नो प्रेयर एंड देन देर इज there are some people who point out that all the rishis who 
channeled the very Upanishads were all happily or otherwise married. <laughs> they were all married. Some of them had two, two spouses as well. You know, Yagya Malkya, Maitreyi, Katyayani, like this. So, uh, so they, this, they say that, you know, even though they were married, they channeled these Upanishads. So it doesn't mean that you have to leave everything and go. You can still have everything and then gain this knowledge. <coughs> then there is one more example that is cited in the, of Bhagavan Vyasa, who wrote Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita, etc. and Brahma Sutra. So he was, he was married and he remained married. He did at no time did he go to the forest and say, you know, I have given it, I am sick of everything or I have got a Vairagya attack and I am leaving everything behind. He didn't need to say that. However, his son, because this is what it is, you know, usually these things happen like that. His son Shuka, so named after a parrot, because you see how hard it is to see the parrot in the trees. Parrot is also green, tree is also green. Shuka was very elusive. At age 8 or something, he told his father, see you, I don't find any point in, uh, in this universe of just eating, drinking and what is this Guru Kula? You know, what is this? What are you, what are you making me do here? I just want to be by myself. And Vyasa, even though he was so knowledgeable, he had a pang. He said, you are so small, where are you going to go? You know, how are you going to just, you know, survive? Don't go. See what I have done. I have remained here and pursued the knowledge. You can also do that. And baby Shuka says, bye bye daddy. You know, this is not, uh, you know, this is not uh, something, this is not my cup of tea. This lifestyle may be fine for you, not for me. I am gone. But what if I need you, he says. Don't you have, you know, don't you think you should just tell me, give me an address, an email, something, you know. <laughs> some phone number, something. He says, telepathy, think of me and I'll be there like the parrot in the tree, which is always really there, but you don't see it. And really, the two or three times uh, Vyasa thought of Shuka, Shuka appears. Yeah. And Shuka also has got a lineage in the sense that when the Mahabharata is over, it's a gory war, horrible war, just the worst war in the history of humankind. In fact, it was a lose-lose situation. People talk of win-win situation. Here the winners lost, the losers of course lost. There was no one left. Even in the royal family of the Pandus, only one person left was Parikshit. And Parikshit was a very interesting chap who was fond of sport, hunting, and had gone into the forest and killed a snake. Don't kill snakes, okay? Yeah. Because you will elicit a curse. That's what happens when snakes are killed. So one curse came upon him because of killing the snake that he would live only for one week. And he was devastated. He said, oh my God, I have one week to live. Cry, scream. No use because this, the, the snake is not going to be very obliging and say, okay, I'll give you another week. No chance. Once the curse is given, it's given. And he didn't know who else to call out. He called out to Shuka. And Shuka came. And he prostrates in front of Shuka's feet and says, I have been dealt the worst blow. I have been told that I have only one week to live. Shuka laughs laughs out and Parikshit is annoyed. <laughs> he says, what? I am telling you some such bad news that I have only one week to live and here you are sitting and throwing your head back and laughing, enjoying at my benefit. Shuka says, I am laughing because at least you know you have one week to live. I don't even have that. <laughs> I could die now, he says. 
I don't even know for sure that I have one week to live. So you are actually so much lucky. And then so, then he asks Shuka, what should I do in this one week? What is it that I need to know that will make a difference? So then one week he gives him a crash course in Vedanta <laughs> before his death. That is the story. So you see Vyasa, Shuka already such different things. Shuka will not even go into the, step into a household. And Vyasa will not leave the household. <laughs> Correct? And then we have the drastic monastic called Adi Shankara. Correct? Adi Shankara does not require any encouragement to discuss sannyasa. You know? <laughs> any topic he will go from here, there, everywhere and bring it back to sannyasa. For him that he is fascinated with it constantly in every Upanishad, in every Bhashya, in everything that he has written. You know? He has to bring in sannyasa and say, see, without this you will not get anything. Whereas there are less drastic people like Vyasa, etc. So this is an age-old war between grahasthas and sannyasis. The grahasthas holding their ground and saying, hey, we matter. We have a place here too. And we can be heard. We can gain this knowledge. So says the Gita. So says the Upanishad. It doesn't matter what you wear, it doesn't matter whether you have three wives or ten, it doesn't matter, it, all it matters is inner vairagya and hey, we are capable of that. We are capable of inner vairagya and we are capable of, you know, starting our own grahastha lineage. <laughs> we also can have our own grahastha lineage and, and uh, what we can cite in our defense is, you know, and Bhrigu and Varuna, Uddalaka and Shvetaketu, Atharva and uh, Atharvana and uh, Brahmaji. And like this, so many, you know, examples abide, you know, in the Upanishads. There are abiding examples of Grahasthas starting their own, own lineage. Each one teaching the child and then that one teaching their child and so on and so forth and the knowledge has been maintained. Don't think that grahasthas are idiots. Don't cross us out of the equation. What is wrong in bringing a grahastha? You also have to eat. Don't think of yourself too highly. If you are a sannyasi, what are you doing? You know, you depend on us to eat. And here we are feeding you and gaining the knowledge. So who is better? We are better. <laughs> we are maintaining you. Correct? Yeah. Anytime you want donation, you come to us. Yeah. We are maintaining you. And we are maintaining ourselves. We are greater. You just sit there saying, Oh, akarma, naishkarmya, siddhi. Big deal. You are not doing anything. You are just sitting there all day doing japa, tapa, whatever you are doing. You know? How boring. Here we are active. We are actually producing something. We are making the world run. Plus we are, you know, gaining this knowledge. Plus we are teaching it to our children. In fact, we are greater. We, you know, are greater. And what proves it? This Upanishad herself proves it. So, because Brahma, what did Brahma ji do? Brahma gave it to Jesht Swajeshta Putraya Prakarshena Aha Praha said it, you know, gave it to his own eldest son. So, do not dismiss the Grihastha injunction, a hidden Purva Paksha. And so, without saying this, Adi Shankara answers. What does he say? Whereas, Yattu, yeah, Grihastheshu, among the Grihasthas, among the householders, Brahma Vidya Sampradaya, sampradaya Kartritva Lingam Asti. Asti we have to supply. Okay? Yeah. So, Yattu, even though there is the prevalence, of Brahma Vidya Sampradaya Kartritvam, the prevalence of the status of starting this lineage of householders among the householders themselves. The householder lineage is a well respected lineage and an abiding lineage whose presence has, you know, has established itself in the history of our tradition. Since ancient times. Even 
though there is this history, he says, let us not forget an important thing. <laughs> lingam, lingam means, lingam asti, means the, uh, linga here is indicator. Even though there is an indication that the grahasthas can and have gained this knowledge, not only gained this knowledge, but transmitted it to other grihasthas. Even though there are indications in the Upanishad and elsewhere, even elsewhere means laukika examples when you see around you, traditions of grihasthas, lingam asti. Asti means there are indications. Na tat sthita nyayam baditum utsahate. Just because there are indicators, that grihasthas here and there, oh, an occasional grihastha has gained the knowledge when no one is looking, that does not mean <laughs> that you can, you can contradict the nyaya. Nyaya means what? The established logic, the established fact. Nyaya here is established fact. You cannot contradict baditum. It is impossible to contradict what? The established fact. Tat sthita. Tat is tasmin. That, the, so there is, you cannot contradict the fact that there is, there is a prevalence or not prevalence, what's the word I'm looking for? There is a, there is a stronger connection between monasticism and this knowledge that you cannot alter that fact. So the grihasthas gaining the knowledge once in a while, here and there, and not just gaining the knowledge, but establishing a lineage of other grihasthas by teaching to their own children and, and therefore multiplying this lineage, does not ward off what? Does not ward off the fact that this knowledge and you know, and sannyasa and vairagya go together. That is the established way. This is also there. We, we give it a salute, we give it a nod, we garland the grihasthas who have been daring and caring enough to gain this knowledge. We give it a nod that it, it seeks and that it deserves. But that doesn't mean that the established fact that was made earlier through the quotes of Bhaiksha Charyan Charantaha, which has been explained earlier, and Paramritaha Parimuchyanti Sarve, all this, that the release from the hold of samsara is through Vairagya, which is symbolized by sannyasa, a lifestyle of sannyasa. It does not contradict that. So don't make the mistake of saying that, that sannyasa has no role in this knowledge. Don't make the mistake, it's a caution, don't make the mistake of saying that sannyasa, of belittling sannyasa for the pursuit of this knowledge. Because sannyasa here is not just the lifestyle, but the vairagya. And whether the vairagya is solely inner vairagya or is also accompanied by outer vairagya, you cannot sort of say that the, 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 the latter is not needed. As long as you have inner vairagya, outer vairagya is not needed, you cannot say that. Because this is something that even in, uh, which, a thinking that is prevalent in current day India, contemporary mm -hmm. India. People say, why do you have to leave everything? And go. This is a this is a argument advanced by many parents. Yeah. The parents will tell their, you know, Vedantic children. What will they say? We are not stopping you from studying. Yeah, as though if they stop, this fellow is going to listen. But <laughs> this Indian thinking. <coughs> you pursue. You teach also. Okay, fine. You teach. We are not thrilled about that. But you teach. Go ahead. You pursue the knowledge. Fine. 
But why do you have to change your dress? Why do you have to become separate from everyone else? Why do you have to stand out like a sore thumb at family events? <laughs> why do you have to have the, change your name? Why do you have to do this? Why not just do it unobtrusively and be one amongst us? It's a very compelling argument, isn't it? Or so the parents think. So this, Adi Shankara says, this is not a good argument because if the grihasthas, for the grihasthas it is okay to do this, let it be okay for them. But for those who need the external lingas of vairagya, let them have that too. Let them have that. Because the lifestyle cannot be dismissed. There is something to be said about the lifestyle of not having to reproduce your own life day after day after day. Of living it in a, in a certain confidence of the existence of Bhagavan and letting Bhagavan lead your life as opposed to letting you lead your life along with Bhagavan. There is a difference. So the sannyasi here means the one who is who is not pursuing the threefold things that generally people pursue. This is called Eshanatraya. You know, Eshanatrayam. This is a group of three Eshanas. Eshana means desires. You know. One is Vitta Eshana, money, which is universally pursued. Who doesn't like Goddess Lakshmi? No one, she is beloved of everyone. And then Putra Ishana, progeny. And if you don't necessarily want children, you might want a, to have a brainchild, you know, leave something behind, have some, you know, write a book or, or something. Whatever it is, leave something behind. That that desire is included in putraishana. Vittaishana, putraishana, and then lokaishana. Loka means after this life, I want to secure a reservation in Swarga. I want to reserve a seat in Swarga by doing good karma here. That is also not there. So these three desires are given up. Vittam includes food, everything, all the any security based pursuits. Putra is also security and desire based pursuits. All those are given up. Loka, same thing. And so the giving up of these three is what, you know, is what distinguishes a sannyasi from a grihastha. The grihastha is pursuing the knowledge and the, the, the three eshanas, whereas the sannyasi is solely, you know, employed in the pursuit and the dissemination of the knowledge rather than just the, the uh, uh, along with anything else. So you cannot deride the lifestyle. And Adi Chankara says, okay fine, we are not deriding the grihasthas who are pursuing this knowledge. So don't deride the sannyasis who have, who are not pursuing grihastha ashrama. So, lingam yastu yattu asti na baditum utsahate. It does not preclude the fact that the sannyasa and this knowledge are very happily aligned and have been aligned since ancient times, you know. And then he says, he gives a very beautiful example. Nahi vidhi shatena api tamaf prakasha yoho ekatra sadbhavam shakyate kartum. You cannot establish the coexistence of night and day, darkness and light, ekatra in the same place, Yugapat, at the same time, by, by a hundred logics. <laughs> yeah. You cannot deploy hundred forms of logic. Vidhi here is logic. You cannot say, you cannot have a hundred rules, even a hundred rules deployed artfully by you. Cannot establish the coexistence of darkness and light in the same place. Can you establish? No. You are wasting your time. You know. 
by by saying that light and darkness can coexist under certain conditions they cannot it is not possible so therefore vidhi satena api even though you give a hundred example of grahasthas pursuing this knowledge this is not just for grahasthas neither is it just for sanyasis although what we are saying is that this lifestyle of sanyasa is necessary for this knowledge is necessary is a necessary precondition for because we if you don't give up other pursuits this pursuits will always shine a little less brightly that's all we are saying and so kimuta lingaihi kevalaihi so kimuta it's a particular kim means what uta also means what indeed it's a particular form of expression it's called kaimutika nyayam because it used kimuta it used so kaimutika you made a little make a little noun out of it adivriddhi and then you make kaimutika nyayam and so it's a kind of a uh, what is that called akshep arthe kim rhetorical question so you you're not going to answer this question because it's actually by the question is implied a negation by the very question is implied a negation so here we are talking of a few lingas here and there few signs that the grihasthas are also involved in creating parampara a few signs that the grihasthas are also active in doing this so you are taking those few signs and then you are making a big you know establishing a big logic by forgetting the rule you are quoting the exception by forgetting the rule <laughs> do not quote the exception and forget the rule the ex- exception stays yes in fact the exception is is an important part of the rule we are not denying that but it does not contradict the it does not rule out the rule you cannot make the exception rule out the rule and this is is also true for people who say i don't need sampradaya people say this and they will cite other exceptions ramakrishna you know paramahamsa gained the knowledge just like that although ramakrishna talks of gurus various kind that is forgotten mirabai gained the knowledge just like that she also talks of guru that is forgotten ramana maharshi gained this knowledge by himself so why can't i so you see we are quoting the exceptions and what is the understanding either you do the work in this life or the previous life the preparation is gained either in this life or in other lives and so you cannot quote the the uh, the exception and then co- and make the rule not stand the rule stands the rule of this upanishad which is named after extensive you know what vairagya by by calling it mundaka that is the shirovratam that is the extreme vairagya which is talked of by the ritual that the person goes undergoes before studying this upanishad the shaving of the hair drastic enough as that is the carrying of the live coals and circumambulating the ashram and the guru three times before setting it at the feet of the guru and then begging for the knowledge so it does not deride that rule it does not negate that rule so just because you have a few things don't think that that has the power to take away an established rule just like you cannot you know take away the rule that darkness and light you know cannot go exist clear okay say yes you will yes. don't want to. evam evam mukta sambandha mukta sambandha prayojanaya ha prayojanaya ha upanishad upanishadah 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 alpaksharam alpaksharam grantha grantha vivaranam vivaranam arabhyate arabhyate ye imam ye imam brahma vidyam brahma vidyam upayanti upayanti atma bhavena atma bhavena श्रद्धा भक्ति 
Saturday, Sunday, both uh, days, Bhashya, and then all the Saturday, Sundays that follow in this month. This is the thing. So, Vedanta Dindima tomorrow uh, at 9.30. So, we'll stop here because it's a good point to stop it. Om Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om Any questions? <laughs> 